figure eight, left turns, right turns, left donuts, right donuts. See how fast we can get her to go. Welcome to today's video where we are gonna show you around on this 39 Invincible that we have been running. So first and foremost, we're very grateful that we were able to run this boat over here. Now, if you guys follow us along in our other videos, you know that we personally have a 32 Intrepid and I do not feel comfortable running that boat over here. The motors are old, the boat is old, just not something we were gonna do. So this really, to be honest, would not have been possible without them. So most importantly, we're gonna show you around this boat and then maybe take it out for a sea trial. How's that sound, Amanda? Perfect. All right, my name is Emily, Amanda's behind the camera, this is Kona, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Like in any boat tour video, we are going to start at the bow. Now this is a single hole, mono hole, 39 Invincible. So you are gonna notice it points in the front. If we were on a catamaran, the front would be like a straight Straighter. line. Straight, not pointy, okay? So this is the front and we have our anchor locker here. Very standard. And you will notice that there is no windlass, but you will see an anchor ball. So Amanda and I have had our fair share of issues with windlasses. Now they're cool because you just push a button and the anchor comes up and I think they're great for sandbars or cruising, but when you're fishing on the reef and your anchor gets stuck, that windlass is not gonna work. So honestly, because we're coming here with the intention of fishing and using this anchor or the anchor we brought extra anchors, it was actually kind of nice to know, okay, good, like there's one less machine that we have to utilize. So an anchor ball, it's the old fashioned way, but 100% happy with that. What I love about this boat is how early forward the rod holders start and how they go all the way to the transom. So we have rod holder, cup holder, rod holder, rod holder, cup holder. The purpose, what a lot of people use these forward rod holders for, is kite fishing. And that's what the cup holders would be here for too. So let's say we were sail fishing from the bow and we had a spread of kites. We were flying kites. I could be sitting here with a water bottle working my kite reels, and then the next angler working their reels with their water bottle and their cup holder. So that's cool. And then if you continue, let's check out more rod holders, Amanda. We have a lot of rod holders, a couple more cup holders, and even more rod holders back here. And if you look, they're all on the console. The rod holders that are gonna be on the console are gonna be ideal for storage. So you're not gonna have a line of bait in the water and then the rod in this rod holder. This is gonna be for, I'm running to my fishing spot. I'm running to Bimini and I have a lot of rods. That's when you're gonna utilize these rod holders and then the ones that are on the bow and the transom, those are gonna be your fishable rod holders. Now, something else I really like in the bow is this under gunnel space, specifically in the bow. Not all boats will have this space up here, which is pretty cool. And I would like to point out how large it is. So yes. all this stuff that you see here, stayed here the whole run over from Miami to Bimini, so pull which is cool. But look how big this net is. And show how much space we've got. Pretty good all size right. landing net. Perfect, now go slide it up there. And we just slid it up in here. we got so much And space. you can see there's even more space. Perfect. And we were just storing our dip net, um, part of our deck brush, and this small gap right here. Now we have this forward fish box. It's a very large forward fish box. And you guys may or may not know, the slogan of Invincible is for when you're serious. So and you got a serious fisherman that's gonna catch a lot of fish. There's plenty of fish box space on this boat. Now let's talk about this very large lounge seat. Looks but it's so doubles. comfortable. Lift that up. That's and a huge coffin box. We have ice for days, quite literally. That was the purpose of getting this ice in the US before doing our crossing because ice over here is very expensive. So we have tons of space for ice and food and more fish in the future. Emily, do us a favor, take a seat and tell us if it's comfortable. It's very comfortable. Is it is it Emily approved? It's it is hundred percent Captain Emily approved. A little bit 
towards the transom, but we're still up in the bow. We have some more gunnel storage where we have some dock lines. And then we also are using this storage here for our fishing rods. Yep, so you can see the rods are gonna go all the way up to the bow. So this is tons of space. We've got yes. some rods in there. So we have this on both sides. So it's the same on the port side as the starboard side. Are you ready to check out the console? Yes, so okay. inside the console, go ahead, open so that it's up. like a double door. Lock that That's in right there. Go for it. And here we have our console. So there's a head right down there. We have a sink, which is nice to have. And we have tons of space up front. So right now we have our free dive fins there, but you could definitely throw some fishing rods up there. There is a lot of space and it's very tall. So Emily, why don't you go ahead and stand in there and show yes. us how much room you have. All right. Excuse me, Kona. All right, are you standing? I'm standing in here and I'm five, almost five four, and I can put my arm all the way straight and pretty much it has to be all the way straight to touch the top. So easily someone a foot taller than me could totally stand in here. Something else I want to point out that I thought was super cool is that you, how, how you start the engines. Yes. Okay. okay, you ready? Yes. Here you can see all three keyholes for the motors. So we have one, two, three, and you have to turn them on in here. Now you can't start them from in here. So the keys have to be in and then we got to go up onto the steering. Let's go, Amanda. I'm at the helm. Now check what's right by the steering. So we have push to start, start and stop button. So this is how you start the motors, and but you have to have the keys in, in the console in order to start them. So it's actually a pretty cool, I would call it kind of like a safety. There's multiple steps to getting these to start, so it's good if you have kids or a family. We have a ton of space for two big Garmin screens, one, two, and we have our mercury gauges right here. So this is where you're gonna see your, how much fuel you have, your RPMs, things like that. We have two BHF radios, we've got one, two. The nice thing about having this space for two big garments is you can run your nav screen on one, fish finder on the other, or nav screen zoomed in on one, nav screen zoomed out on the other. That's what we did to cross. We've got our and radar. And oh yes. We yeah. had one screen had the radar going, and then the yes. other screen had the nav. And then, you were saying, Amanda? Yes, so we have our, uh, um, bow thruster right there. Have we used it? We have not we used have it. We have not used the bow thruster. Autopilot, have we used that? Oh, yes, yes we did. Yes, we used that on the crossing. And then, let's see, we have trim tabs right here, throttles. throttles, and right here we've got camera and infrared. So there's a camera for some night vision, basically. If you're coming in at night, that can show up on your Garmin. You can turn that some on. Some music. Music right there. And let's check out what's next, Emily? The bucket seats? The bucket seats. Okay, so if you guys see our other videos, you know we really like bench seats because you can fit a lot of people on them. But what is nice about these bucket seats is that when you put them all three down, yep, put them and then all three down, and then you and then put, you put up these armrests arm rest up, you get a bench right. or a bucket so seat. So on the run over, Kona was laying between all three of them and we were like standing here like this. So she was our little princess that had all three seats to herself. Moving towards the transom, we have the nice tackle station. So very large, lots and lots of space. Now you guys can see here, we currently have garbage bags, but if this was our boat full time, you would see tackle boxes stored in there. So I would slide my tackle box out and get to use it. Now we're only on this for a week, which is still a long time. A little less, yeah. A little less than a week. And then we have drawers in here. This drawer currently has our e curb, a scale, and- Why don't we go ahead and shut this and show them the seat? Yes, this is So cool. go ahead and shut that. There you go. And we got a seat. A bucket seat. I mean, there not a bucket go. seat, a bench seat. seat. Put Kona up there. Kona. There oh, we go. It. Kona Good girl. approved seat right there. We've got, of course, rod holders and cup holders right back here, more than we know what to do with, along with rod holders up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, I think. We also have very nice outriggers. You guys can see our Bahamas courtesy flag currently flying. These are great riggers for trolling, having a nice spread. Maybe you're wahoo fishing or maybe you're trolling a weed line for some mahis. On this side, we have a dive door. So maybe you're scuba diving. Maybe you're at the sandbar with family. Maybe you're at the SS Sapona. Maybe you're at the SS Sapona. So check this out. This comes up and over like that. This door opens. Ta-da! And then out. right where Emily is standing, if you lift that up, that's where the ladder is going to be. So it's right there, ready to go. Maybe you caught a big yellowfin tuna and you, you gotta need bring the it door. in through the door. Exactly. And while Emily works on closing those up, we've got fish box one right here. 
we have a second fish box right here. Now these have macerators in them as well to pump the bloody water out or they can drain to the bilge up to you. And there's a third, this is a Y well, so it's gonna be a floor well. Pop that open, we got a nice big floor well there. So here is our bilge. So the bilge you can clearly see is super organized. Everything is labeled bait well one, bait well two, bait well, oh, bait well two, three, one. You guys can see that. Um, so here's our bilge, very clean and organized bilge. And almost done here, we've got our last live well. Our transom well is right here. We have our blue interior well with the clear top so you can check on your baits easily. We got three big mercuries, one, two, three. But Emily, can you move that Yeti and show yes. us the seat? This is the last, last thing we want to show you. Okay. There you go, opening that seat up. Take a seat. So we've got <laughs> one seat right there. Wow, that looks comfortable. One seat right there. Kona's got her bench seat, of course. And I think that's going to wrap up our video. The video's not over, Amanda. I can't believe you said that. We still gotta take all of you guys with us for a little sea trial. We'll see how fast we can get it, you know, get some cool shots for you guys so you can see what it looks like when it's running and what it feels like. Alrighty, we are about ready for our sea trial. Emily ran over to the Hilton to grab some sunscreen because we forgot our sunscreen at our Airbnb, which yes, it's only just across the street, but this was a little quicker, so we're waiting on Emily, and then we're gonna head out and do the sea trial. Okay, I see Emily. She is just about rounding the corner. Um, in case you guys didn't know, we are actually in Bimini right now, so that's why we're at the Hilton right here. And basically, I just wanna let you guys know that we basically have a full tank of gas. I think there's like less than 10 knots of wind, so we're gonna see how fast we can go, how smooth she rides, all those things, and here comes Emily. Alrighty, you gotta tell us. How expensive is the sunscreen? <laughs> Ready for this? It was seven. Wait, wait it was. Yes. It's only a thirty. It's only a thirty. <laughs> okay, thirty sunscreen. It was seventeen dollars without bucks. tax. It was nineteen dollars and four cents. So would it have been smarter to go to the Airbnb? Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Oh well, that's okay. <laughs> so like I said, we've got a full tank of gas. Um, I believe we have. 130 gallons in each port and starboard tank, and the center tank right now has 240 gallons. How many did it start with before we got here? Before we left? Oh man, it was like 200 and upper 200s. Upper 200s, yes. So just so you guys can see how heavy we're gonna be sitting right now, and we're gonna see how fast we can go. I told them. Oh, that's that true. It's gonna be a lot of extra weight. A lot of extra weight, but um, we got lots of ice. The coffee box is full of ice. Full of ice. So let's get going. Earlier in this video, you guys saw where our rods were being stored, but now that we're gonna be running the boat, I don't wanna keep them there because if we start banging at all, even though it is calm, like I don't want the rods banging on each other and yeah, that's okay. not good. So where are we putting so, them? We're gonna show you guys. So, so first check out the top, Amanda. Up top. Ready? Pick a spot. All right. And in the rod holder. So we got one there and we the got... rest are all right here. But I feel like Kind of bothers me that there's an odd number. So okay. let's, let's give him a buddy. Oh, he gets a buddy. All right, so we're gonna put two up here. How there we go. Convenient. And now we have an even number here. So slide that one over. Perfect. All right, let's get out of here. Here we go. Fun fact. Some advice that I would find useful is steer before you gear, and that way you get the most out of your props. Here we go. Into the open ocean of Bahamian waters. And? And? Back away from the dock. Yes, back away from the dock if you have the ability to. Because um, if you pull forward, your transom can kick out yes. into the dock. And the last thing you want is for your props or your motors hit the dock but if your bow lightly scrapes it well nothing a paint job can't fix <laughs> either way backing away from the dock is you're the much less way likely to, to hit the dock at all as we make our way out the channel to open water i just kind of want to point out this shoal sandbar right here straight out in front of us so you guys can kind of see that it's brown Brown, brown, run aground. So please, whatever you do, don't go over it. You can also see the waves breaking. So if all of a sudden you notice flat water and waves breaking, that means the water is very shallow. So right there, that brown, brown, run aground, please avoid that and stay in the channel. So we're gonna stay in the channel until we get all the way out. 
and we can actually cut across the shallow water but right here is not where you're going to want to cut across and it comes off that point right there and stretches all the way out and i can see the shallow water start to get deep you ready to get on plane we are ready to get on plane see how fast we can get her to go with a almost full tank of fuel <laughs> here we go Trim the motors up a good amount because just a little rule of thumb guys the higher when your motors come up your bow comes up think of it that way when your motors are down the bow goes down so get as much boat out of the water so the less resistance there is on the boat against the water the faster you go because there's literally less surface area of the hole inside in the ocean we got up to what I minute mean, i think i saw 54. 54. i saw 54 for like a split second cool there full tank of gas lots of ice lots of gear on here I'd say it's pretty cool. It probably gets up to 56, 60, maybe to maybe 60. 60 on an empty tank. And see, you can see the wave conditions we're dealing with today. So I would definitely not call it Lake Atlantic, but it's pretty close to Lake Atlantic. But we've still got some, I don't even want to call it chop. What would you call this? Just, just very minimal waves. <laughs> there you go. Check it out. Look at the screen. Look at all those squigglies and donuts. That is all that you guys were just now watching. That's what we were doing. We were making figure eights, left turns, right turns, left donuts, right donuts, going straight. We never went backwards. I could say I was like, forwards, we didn't go backwards, but we went sideways, we did all sorts of things. We hope you guys enjoyed watching the ins and outs of all the hatches, coming with us for a ride on the boat. We have been on this boat a handful of times. We've been on it out of Miami, and then we also obviously ran it here. We ran it in under just under two hours and stopping to film a little bit, so it really would have been even less time if we weren't talking to you guys in some decent waves. I mean, it was not really rough. It was blowing, gusting 15 out of the southeast, so you guys can kind of picture that. Maybe we had twos, the occasional three-footers, but this boat got right on top of the seas, ran all the way here, and I mean, it's a great boat, you guys. So. You know what? In the description box, we'll put some information that everyone wants to check out Invincible Boats. But in the meantime, once you get out there, have fun and stay safe.